We begin tonight with new reaction to the verdict in the murder trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. As we first reported on 12 News Now at 5 over on WPRI 12, a jury found Chauvin guilty of all three counts. He left the courtroom in handcuffs this afternoon. Bail is revoked, bond is discharged, and the defendant is remanded to the custody of the Hennepin County Sheriff. Sentencing will take place eight weeks from now. Meantime, today's verdict leading to an outpouring of emotions and reactions from people across the nation. I'm overwhelmed. I'm grateful. I'm relieved. It's horrible, but this is incredible that things are about to change. This trial is not the end of what needs to happen. I'm scared what's going to happen to the people, just everybody on both sides. I just was, I'm just happy and sad at the same time. Emotional is just flowing over every, always. President Biden, Vice President Harris called the family of George Floyd after Derek Chauvin was found guilty of his murder. The president and vice president congratulated the family on the jury's decision while vowing to continue to fight racism. As we saw in this trial from the fellow police officers who testified, most men and women who wear the badge serve their communities honorably. But those few who fail to meet that standard must be held accountable. This verdict brings us a step closer. And the fact is, we still have work to do. We still must reform the system. President Biden says this is a time for the country to come together and to unite as Americans. And we have team coverage tonight. 12 News reporters Sheena Loshudo and Rob Nesbitt are standing by with reaction from a local police chief's organization and with leaders with Black Lives Matter groups. But first, Kim Kalunin has a look at what happens next. Kim? Well, we'll Derek Chauvin is expected to receive his sentence in eight weeks, and it could be the first time we hear directly from him since he chose not to testify during his trial. Former police officer Derek Chauvin escorted from a Minneapolis courtroom in handcuffs. The 45-year-old now in custody, where he will remain until his sentencing in June. You know, what will be fascinating in this particular sentencing proceeding will be what uh, the defendant himself has to say. Since he chose not to testify at trial, we don't really have any sense of whether there is uh, remorse, whether there is acceptance of responsibility. Andrew Horwitz is the director of the Criminal Defense Clinic at Roger Williams University. He believes the prosecution will push for a lengthy prison sentence. This wasn't an officer who got into an off-duty fight. This was an officer who was using his uniform and his badge in order to commit a heinous crime, uh, certainly the prosecution will will seek a very long sentence based on that factor. Find the defendant guilty. Horwitz says he wasn't surprised by Tuesday's verdict, even though the jury deliberated for just over 10 hours and sent no questions to the judge. It often takes jurors a longer time to get to unanimity on guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. So the fact that this was a pretty quick verdict in a <laughs> difficult uh, emotionally charged uh, trial suggests to me that there was probably very little dissension, if any, in the jury. Guilty. Horowitz says the evidence was strong, particularly cell phone video that captured the nation's attention and disputed the narrative initially released by police that George Floyd died following a medical incident. I think the video was everything. We used to have to listen to police accounts of how things transpired. We no longer have to listen solely to police accounts. We have video to look at. And Horowitz expects Chauvin to appeal, but says the appeals process is not about the facts of the case and would instead seek to point out errors that were made during the legal proceedings. I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News. Kim, thank you. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker released a statement in response to the verdict, saying in part, quote, Nothing can reverse the pain, suffering, and agony of George Floyd's family and friends, but this decision does make clear that Officer Chauvin was not above the law. He was given a fair trial, found guilty, and he will pay a price for his actions. 
Law enforcement all over the country watched today's guilty verdict in the trial of Derek Chauvin to be prepared for any protests or riots that could break out. 12 News reporter Rob Nesbitt spoke to the executive director of the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association. He joins us now live in Providence with the story of how local officers are preparing. Rob? Mike, this area in front of the Providence Place Mall is where a violent riot took place last summer. You can still see a black spot in the road where a police cruiser was set on fire. Events that police want to avoid happening again. This is what fire and outrage looked like in Providence 10 months ago. One of many nationwide protests after the death of George Floyd. Providence police hoping to avoid a round two after the verdict of Derek Chauvin I find the defendant guilty was read three times in a Minneapolis courtroom Tuesday. Throwing bottles and bricks and objects at police officers doesn't get us anywhere. Providence police say they've been working with state and federal partners to prepare for protests, but that no riots are planned. 12 News law enforcement analyst Stephen O'Donnell says the nation's calls for justice were heard. From our perspective in law enforcement, it's exactly the way it should have been. All three counts guilty. It's telling the jury came back in 10 hours. Executive Director of the Rhode Island Police Chiefs Association, Sidney Wardell, agrees. He condemns the actions taken by Derek Chauvin against George Floyd, as well as the other officers around him. I think one of the things is, you know, you, re you get to say that the justice system worked properly. Um, the family, you know, hopefully can take a little bit of solace in, in, in the results of that. Wardell says that progress has been made in the last year, such as new legislation against the use of force and chokeholds, but that the conversations around racial injustice need to continue in police departments. This is a black guy on law enforcement, uh, no question about it. Colonel Hugh Commence with Providence Police says that his department has had conversations with every organized group in the city willing to speak. Reporting live in Providence, I'm Rob Nesbitt, 12 News. Rob, thank you. The time between learning there was a verdict and when the verdict was actually read was an intense hour and a half for many people. Black Lives Matter Rhode Island says they will continue fighting for justice and they will continue protesting police brutality. 12 News reporter Sheena Loshudo watched the verdict come in with leaders of the group and continues our local coverage. Sheena. Yeah, Shannon, we were there for a bit, and as soon as the judge came on the screen ready to read the verdict, it got very silent, and it was really intense for a few moments. And then when we heard the words guilty three times, the mood changed. The room breathed a sigh of relief. Yes. This is a look at the founder and executive director of Black Lives Matter I'm, Rhode I'm Island seconds after hearing the verdict. Really relief would be an understatement. I am still feeling some type of way that we're going through this still to this day. So Gary Dantzler agreed to watch the highly anticipated moment with us from inside the future BLM Rhode Island headquarters. It's set to be an innovation center dedicated to Rhode Island's black community. This is all for George Floyd. This is all for him in remembrance of his of, of, of his blood that he gave to 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 to, to black America. So we have to correct it. Nearly a year after Floyd's death and a trial later, Dantzler says the momentum needs to continue. We go back to the drawing boards. Uh, it goes back to economic empowerment, improving the infrastructure of America, of black America, African-American America, to fix it, this problem that we have deeply and deep rooted. You know, justice is George Floyd being alive, right? Um, you know, this is the best result possible and by no means am I upset. But I also recognize that we really need to change the way that we think about our American justice system and policing itself so black people don't die to begin with. So we don't, we don't have this situation. The executive director of BLM Rhode Island Political Action Committee, who supports things like reallocating police funding, agrees the fight for justice won't end here. You know, with all this negativity going around in this world, it's good to have a result like this and be able to use this as a launching point to move forward. And Dantzler says the main message here is that the work is not done yet, and BLM Rhode Island is committed to continuing that work. Much of it will be in the honor of George Floyd. Reporting live in Providence tonight, I'm Sheena Lushudo, 12 News.